Ah, do, 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 do. Duracoat Finish Firearm of the Week brought to you by our good buddies at Duracoat Firearm Finishes. There you go. All right. Last week, we talked a little bit about uh, the uh, traditional Rhodesian, the Bush War. How about the Bush War traditional? Now, this is kind of a follow up. People said, well, yeah, you know, but the original, if you go back and you look at photographs from the Bush War, if you go back and look at photographs from the, the Rhodesian Bush War, uh, you say, well, either the, the in the old, old photos uh, from like the very beginning when they were wearing a lot of the ones when they were wear, just just wearing shorts and tennis shoes. Like, Nobody ever wore shorts and tennis shoes to fight a war. Au contraire, mon frere. It was hot. They were wearing T-shirts, shorts, running shoes, and they were carrying R1s and chest rigs, which is some of the most badass stuff you've ever seen in your life. But uh, if you go back and you look at those old photos and you say, well, I want to be, you know, I, I want to be a, uh, oh, I want to do something authentic, something that looks authentic and a really nice, well-made, uh, you know, pattern uh, is not going to, it's not going to cut it because they didn't have really nice looking guns. It didn't look like you sat down as a professional with a template and did one layer and then you remove the template and you put another one on and did another one. What does it look like? Well, it looks like a kid, like an 18-year-old kid sat on an ammo crate in the motor pool with a paintbrush and put yellow baby poop and, and uh, jungle green on his gun. That's what it looks like. Well, there's a reason it looks like that. Because that's what they did. Because the Rhodesian Light Infantry guys, at some point in time, the sergeant major said, hey, we're camouflaging the kids up. We're sending them out in the bush all green and brown and, and loam and tan and stuff. But their rifles, they have these giant black rifles that kind of stand out. So the sergeant major, he said, uh, you guys need to paint your guns. Well, they didn't have Duracoat back then. They didn't have Krylon back then. They couldn't run out to Walmart or Target or, or uh, Lowe's or Best Buy and just, you know, get some rattle cans. What they had was, where was the paint? Where's the paint? Did the infantry guys, are they issued paint? No, I was in the infantry. We didn't have, they didn't issue us paint. Where's all the paint? It's in the motor pool. So the guys that are painting the the trucks and the and the you know the armored vehicles and all that that that's where it's at. It's in the motor pool. So you you get you you get you know first platoon and you send first platoon over to the motor pool, and the motor pool sergeant standing there with a with a camel non filter hanging out of his mouth, and he he tells them, "All right, here's your paint, here's your brushes, go do your rifles," and that's what they did. They, they sat down and they, they got a, hey, had a transistor radio over in the corner. It was hanging on a hook on a post. They turned it to the local radio station and they were listening to the Rolling Stones painted black and, and the doors and so on and so forth. Can I tell you something cool, Jared? No. All right. Well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to tell them something cool. You can just shut up. <laughs> uh, when, when I did my R1, when I did the, the, the DS Arms SA-58, I took my Bluetooth speaker and my phone and I put it on the 1970s rock radio station. Oh, yeah. I programmed it to that so that I could listen to the doors and the stones and so funny. forth while I was I was trying to channel my inner Rhodesian light infantry, trying to imagine what it would have been like. The only thing I didn't have was a camel non-filter, uh, a non-filtered camel to, to sit there and and, uh, you know, they sat there on their, if you want to think, I mean, I was in the infantry. A lot of you guys were in the infantry and you know what they did. They sat there on their, and they, and they, they bull crapped and, 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 and told various, you know, tall tales and talked about chicks that they wanted to do and, you know, and all that stuff. And they painted up their rifles. Now, real, real, how, real quick, little aside, just, yeah. this is funny. 
So, but what what you're saying about like the camel noun filter? Yeah, that, that reminded me of a, a was it like Grumpy Old Men or something? But it was in a movie from the '80s where I remember the dude was talking to his dad, who was like an 85 year old man. He was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, the it was, it was Burgess be, Meredith." Yeah, the doctor said you're supposed to be smoking smoking filtered cigarettes. And he's like, "Ah, whatever." So back in the 80s, it wasn't don't smoke. It was smoke the filtered ones. Those are better for you. <laughs> yeah, that was actually in the 90s. But uh, anyway, Whatever. yeah. That, You're supposed to switch the filters. Ah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is like when someone's 87 years old, you're it's like, dude, I'm 87. Yeah, it, it, it just as hey, is, there's a rabbit hole. I'm going to jump down in it. Uh, when uh, Jerry Seinfeld interviewed Jerry Lewis for his comedians and cars getting coffee. Jerry Lewis was in his nineties at the time, I believe. And uh, they went to breakfast. Jerry Lewis and Jerry Seinfeld went to breakfast and Jerry's Jerry Lewis ordered. um, He ordered bacon. I think he was like 89 or 90. He ordered eggs and bacon and toast. Yeah. Lewis, Jerry Lewis died at age 91. And uh, matter of fact, the, the, the Jerry Seinfeld interview was the last interview. No way. Of of Jerry Lewis in his life. He he, he died one? like six months later. Yeah. But Jerry but Seinfeld says to him, he's he making this face and he's like, I can't believe you're eating that. And, he, and he's he's eating the bacon and he's like, what? He's like, uh, do you? He's like, you worried about your health or something like? I'm like, I'm ninety years old. I'm ninety. And I'm eating a big plate of what? What am I save? What am I saving up for? Yeah, you know when you're 120, you're gonna regret eating all that bacon. It's like if somebody's 87 and they're smoking non-filtered camels, you're like, you better not do that. It's like I'm 87, okay? What am I? Yeah. When you're 130, you're gonna wish you hadn't smoked those non-filtered camels. But anyway, <laughs> you got us down a rabbit hole. Back, whoop. We're back at the Duracoat Finish Farm. So you say, I want to do my gun in a traditional Bush War Rhodesian style, but because I got the clothes now, and I do have the clothes, and we're going to follow up. We're going to do a special report about Rhodesian light infantry camo clothing, that, and I'm just waiting for the maker Right now, right now, the guys who make the clothes are kind of in an upheaval. They're setting up a brand new shop in Texas, and things are a little crazy for them. But once they settle, I'm going to get him on here, and uh, he's a veteran too. He's, and we're going to talk about that. That's of the Bush be, War. Yeah, not not the, oh. not of the Bush War. He's a, he's a military veteran. Okay. Hmm. So, any user, the two colors that you want to get from Duracoat because uh, they don't have one that's called Baby Poop Yellow. Uh, they have one that's called Russian Special Forces Yellow, because I said Spetsnaz previously during the show. I said Spetsnaz, and it's not called Spetsnaz. It's called Russian Special Forces Yellow, because apparently people didn't know what a Spetsnaz was, and they're like they were confused. So, Russian Special Forces Yellow is the closest to a baby poop yellow Duraco that they have, and I think they should just change it to baby poop yellow. Would you that guys buy that? Sound as badass. <laughs> yes. Russian <laughs> special forces, man. That makes my gun more accurate. Uh, that's, that's Baby funny. poop is just like a big splatter, so uh, it makes it, make it less accurate. Uh, and the people, the I see, our friends at Duraco, they listen. Oh yeah. They actually listen. Hey guys, everybody out on the floor at at uh, up in uh, up in in Wisconsin, uh, and they're like, "No, stop, Paul, stop, stop!" They're all screaming, "Stop! Don't tell people that they're gonna they're gonna want." That. <laughs> we have enough skews. We don't need you to tell people that. Yeah. But it's Russian special forces yellow. It is the baby poop yellow, and then there's a lot of greens. If you go to Duracoat and you're like, oh, and you look up green, you're like, holy crap balls. There's 28 different shades of green. The green you want to pick is the, uh, it's the vortex green. Vortex. There is a vortex green. Now, vortex green. To be fair, 
they do say Durko does say that they can come up with any color that is true so if amy is listening and she's cringing right now she's like just stop all now you said if it's not in the catalog and we want it that we need to come to you <laughs> and you <laughs> oh that would be cool would that be cool if they if they just if they made it easier for the consumer by packaging the special forces yellow and the vortex in a in a two pack and calling it the the rli the rhodesian light infantry or call it the bush war they could call it the bush war traditional and and if they had, this is see, see how things had, happen i thought they had the oh they have a really super nice rhodesian uh yeah. pattern but here's the deal it's too nice oh it's too nice because oh. if you look up the pictures of rhodesian light infantry soldiers carrying their r1s i see what you're saying it doesn't look like it was in the factory niceness it looks like like you know johnny was sitting on an ammo crate in the motor pool painting his rifle with baby poop and juggle green so if i had a company called duracoat fire and finishes what i would do is i would package up i would do a special run and i would call it yellow baby poop yellow and jungle green i would put them together i would call that the the traditional the bush war traditional kit and i would sell it to the consumer as a two-can kit that's what i would do if i had a company called duracoat now i don't have a company called duracoat so it's not up to me so that but that's uh if you're into that then rock on and like i said i've got the uh i finally after going through all of the covid restrictions and the delays in shipping and the containers sitting off the coast for months on end i finally got my rhodesian uh light infantry official brushstroke camouflage uniform tops bottom hat all that good stuff so and uh, we're gonna we're gonna bring uh we're gonna yes yeah, look how nice that is way too nice that is so nice it's 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 too nice that's the thing is it's too nice now would i be mad if i had a gun like that no i wouldn't be mad but it wouldn't look like like the 19 year old yeah. privates in the rli yeah, were yomping through the bush with so all right let's continue so duracoat finished firearms if you want to duracoat like a champ you can do it follow the link in the show notes go to duracoat university get signed up and uh you can be a pro just like them where did they get the show notes though 